We're going to be in Luke chapter 10 near the end. So get closer to chapter 11. We're talking about kindness today. Kindness. It's a good one. What, what do you think the definition of kindness is? Mary didn't do her homework again. I see it. No, I wanted to say to be kind. Oh, oh, she's pulling out a kid answer. Yes. Helpful. Kind. Kindness. Tender hearted. Mm-hmm. Helpful. Love. It's like an act, isn't it? Yes. It's an act action. of, you know, being nice. Um, it was interesting when I looked the word up. It actually means kindness and gentleness, which was weird because the next fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. And it's a different root word in the Hebrew that they use for it. So it was interesting that they had it that way. So what I, in my mind, when I broke it down, I was like, okay, so to be kind, I have the kindness toward you, which is an action toward and if the same word means gentleness, gentleness means my demeanor, my spirit in that action. So kindness is more than me just doing something nice for Mary. Kindness is the way I did that nice thing for Mary. Because I could go, and I'll just pick on you, I could go put the roof on and the whole time, I don't know why we're doing this. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and, and yeah. I really didn't do an act of kind. I did something that was needed. But really, I didn't do it out of an act of kindness. I did it an act of whatever. And, and then people do that all over. And especially if I do it with with a an attitude of someday down the road, I'm going to call this chip in. You know, and then that's, that's not an act of kindness either. You know, it, I think it's Paul that talks about doing things where we'll never get repaid. You know, don't, when you do it, don't worry about ever get repaid. Do it for the ones that can't repay you. It's like if I do something nice for a millionaire, it may be a chance I want something back from them. But if I do it for someone that can't repay me, then what am I doing it for? Um, it's interesting. My aunt gets more mad at me than I do. She's always fussing at me. You do more for everybody else than you do for me. Mm-hmm. And she's always fussing. And she likes to throw that, you used to call yourself a Christian at me all the time and and all this stuff. And it's like, wow. And, and then I... The last time she did it, I started thinking about it. I was like, "Well, I didn't. I don't do stuff for any pe- other people for, to receive something back." I said, "But the the chips, the chips are coming back." Mm-hmm. Because I was thinking about it. You know, it, just this last time, my truck has been down. Everybody that's done acts of kindness for me and you know, give me a ride. You know, you know. A holy handshake and, and, and other things pick help me go get stuff and mm-hmm. and I was like so it, it all comes back and God always moves it in a circle even though we don't necessarily get it all the time even from sowing a seed yeah and receiving yeah. something um, yeah. as well it, it's fascinating uh I was I, I got a uh, we're gonna talk about the Good Samaritan um, and, and I've been listening to different people, reading different things throughout the week. Uh, so last night I just happened to see another video pop up because with YouTube, if you watch one thing, it's going to send you everything and anything on that topic, which is good in my scenario when I was studying it, but not, not when I'm like, I want to look at my garden shows, not this all the time, or I want to listen to my preachers, not this all the time. And <laughs> So I got to go back to my subscriptions instead of just doing the, the, the home search where if I don't watch one of one thing, it goes in a pretty good space where I get to watch everything I normally watch. While I was watching this guy, I'm going to use some of his stuff today. He, he, he's, he was a former professor at Dallas Seminary, and he was pretty good. He said some things that I'd never heard before. It was really, really cool what he said. So I'm, hopefully I can portray some of that to you today from the Good Samaritan. There's one thing in the Good Samaritan that is said that I'd never, ever seen that he brought up. And then when he brought it up, I was like, ah, and it's about the neighbor. So it is pretty cool. But I want to tell you, I want to start a story of kindness before we get going. There was this, there was this lady worked in a meat factory. And 
for whatever reason, she was curious to check out the rest of the factory. So she goes into the cooler room just to see what meat was hanging in the cooler room, I guess. She didn't ever really give an explanation of why she went in there. She was just checking out different rooms before she went off work. Well, you all know the horror stories, and you all seen it on the movies. Usually when someone goes into a locker, it locks from the outside, and they can't get out. Guess what happened to this lady? She's locked in the cooler. So this was on a Friday, so they're closing down the, for the weekend. So she's pretty much anticipating she's stuck in this cooler all weekend. So she's in there 15 minutes. She's in there a half hour. She's in there an hour. And she's pretty much after an hour, she's pretty much give up that anybody's going to come into the cooler. Now, next thing she knows, she hears the cooler door open. I don't know why she moved away from the door. Maybe there was a warm pocket somewhere. Who knows? And, and she heard the door open and she heard someone say, anybody in here? I said, yeah, I came in and got locked in. And it was the security guard. Well, the security guard don't make rounds. The security guard is the gate security guard. His only responsibility is to be at the gate to check your ID to make sure you're supposed to be coming in and to open the gate to let you leave at the end of the day. That's his only responsibility. He does not make rounds of the building. He doesn't check and see if everybody's there or not. The lady goes, how did you know I was in here? He said, I didn't know I was in here. I came looking for you. And she goes, why did you come looking for me? He says, well... You are the only person every day when you come in, you say hi to me when you come into work, and you smile at me and acknowledge me when you're walking by. And he says, and every day when you leave, you say hi to me and you smile at me as you're leaving. You're the only one out of all the employees of this whole factory that acknowledge me as a person when you come and go. And I noticed you came in. I did not notice you leave. So I was wondering if something was wrong, and I started looking for you. Right? An act of kindness. That act of kind, I don't know if it would have, I don't know how cold this cooler was. Uh, I don't know if she would have went, you know, you hear the horror stories of people sitting in the, the, to get locked into certain coolers and they're not even on and they die and they freeze to death because their mind goes into hyper overdrive. It's so cold, they're going to freeze and they didn't even on. It's, they would have been fine. They would have been a little wore out by the weekend if they stayed in these coolers, but it didn't freeze them to death. Their mind froze them to death. They had all the symptoms. So I don't know what this lady would have been like in this meat cooler but a random act of kindness because she smiled at someone when she went to work every day 